The six major oil discoveries off the coast of Suriname in the past one and a half years, of which the Kwaskwasi 1 discovery is the most significant one so far as mentioned by the oil companies Apache and Total, will change Suriname forever. The positive impact of these developments in the country can be large, something that many Surinamese people do not yet seem to realize. The efforts made by the pioneers of the Surinamese oil industry did not go to waste. It has always been believed that these discoveries would one day become a reality. There are five oil discoveries made by the multinationals Apache and Total at Block 58 and one discovery made at Block 52 by oil giant ExxonMobil and his partner Petronas from Malaysia. And most definitely, more discoveries will be made in the next few years. Of the 73 new discoveries made globally till October 2020, Suriname emerged as the second best location regarding the volume of found oil in the world, the second after Russia, according to Rystad Energy, an independent energy research and business intelligence company. The American multinational investment bank and financial service provider Morgan Stanley says that the modeling of the Surinamese Block 58 shows it contains a potential of 6.5 billion barrels of oil. This represents roughly an amount of $455 billion based on the current oil price as of 1st July 2020 of 70 US dollars per barrel with a share of more than 150 billion US dollars in royalties and tax revenues for the state of Suriname. This quality could be developed in seven phases with the first oil scheduled for 2025. This indicates that the production of the first oil will truly happen within a few years, partly due to favorable conditions around the quality and cost price to pump and transport the oil. The proceeds from royalties are not the main source of income for the state of Suriname. Suriname will derive the largest source of income from the effects of local content. Economic activity till 2026 Estimating the amount of resources, oil and gas, in a reservoir is crucial at every stage of the reservoir's life cycle. This is called the appraisal phase or assessment phase. When the assessment of the risk and the economic viability of the oil found at Block 58 in the appraisal phase is found to be sufficient, then a phase of economic activity begins in preparation for pumping the oil out of the ground. FPSO – Floating Production Stories and Offloading The first floating production storage and offloading vessel, the so-called FPSO, in the waters of Suriname is expected by the end of 2025. A floating production storage and offloading vessel is a floating production platform used to produce, treat and store petroleum and gas hydrocarbons in anticipation of further transport. The function of an FPSO is to produce petroleum and gas in the high seas mainly at places where the water depth does not or hardly permits, installing fixed production platforms supporting on the seabed or in places where there is no network of pipelines available to bring the hydrocarbons ashore. The specific weather conditions in a given area can also give rise to the use of an FPSO design. Finally, the FPSO can be restored when the reservoir is depleted and be switched on at another location if necessary. For each well that is developed, a separate FPSO is developed and built to generate its own spin-off effects. With the arrival of FPSOs in Surinamese waters, the investment of the operators IOCs, are also increasing, which presents an excellent opportunity for Suriname to benefit from such investments. Prime Contractors the first FPSO will need support from at least 17 prime contractors for its operations at sea. Some of the most well-known are Schroenberger, Halliburton, SO Exploration, Noble, Stena and Technip FMC. In addition to the prime contractors, there will be a chain of contractors to support the operations at sea. It concerns 70 general contractors, 500 service contractors and 700 to 800 supporting contractors. This chain of contractors will have to establish themselves in Suriname and will have to make large investments. For example, there will be an increase in construction activities such as the construction of warehouses, offices and various other buildings and construction activities. 
there will be a flux of foreign capital to Suriname which will increase employment and more new companies will be launched. We will soon talk about 600 new enterprises and the creation of 5,000 to 10,000 new jobs by 2026. Thus, very important economic activities for which Suriname must be prepared. This is why it is so important for the private sector to look into the developments associated with the oil offshore business and the opportunities that come with those developments in order to create more value for the local Surinamese economy. This will give an instant boost to the country's currently still worsening financial situation. The oil discoveries in Suriname have not gone unnoticed on the international financial and oil market. There is a lot of interest from abroad to benefit from these high-quality oil wells. The oil industry is known for its high economic value. The standards in every area in this industry are of an exceptional quality and meet the highest standards of corporate governance. This is why it's important for Suriname to be well organized and well managed on certain matters. The multinationals themselves have very strict rules and conditions prior to doing business with third parties but also when doing so with governments. However, the largest stream of revenues must come from what is called local content. For this purpose, a targeted local content strategy and policy must be developed. This needs to be discussed in the Surinamese society, but in particular by those who have experience in setting up local content policies, perhaps based on experience in foreign countries that have already been through these early oil and gas discovery phases. Ultimately, a solid LCP policy must result in a win-win formula for both the multinationals and the Republic of Suriname. Local content policy The income from royalties is, as mentioned earlier, only a small percentage of what Suriname and its people can earn from the oil reserves. The main revenue should come from what is called local content. In this context, an increasing number of countries have developed local content policies to encourage the use of local content by stimulating local employment, education and training of locals, capital investments in the local community, in order to create financial value for the local economy. Trinidad and Tobago has 10 years of experience in the offshore oil business and has its local content policy in place for many years now. Suriname can look at other countries to figure out how they have created such successful policies in the past. Definition of local content Although there is no generally accepted definition of local content, this concept is generally seen as a set of policy instruments put in place by national governments to ensure that certain parts of production such as labor, stocks, technology and knowledge needed at each stage of the value chain comes from the local economy. The key elements that characterize LCPs are the development of the labor market, addition of value, the development of local industries and the promotion of innovation, technology, research and development. Where does Suriname stands in the process of preparing for the major oil and gas industry developments that are yet to come? According to certain experts, the Surinamese government and the local business community are not yet sufficiently aware of the impact that the oil industry will have on the country's economy. It is therefore extremely important that Surinamese people are trained and prepared for the new jobs and opportunities that will be created by these multinationals in Suriname's oil and gas industry in the years to come in order to truly profit economically from these recent oil and gas discoveries. The Offshore Oil and Gas Sector in Development If one were to measure how Suriname stands in the preparations to actively and fully participate and profit from the offshore business, then one would have to conclude that Suriname and the Surinamese do not yet realize the possibilities this brings for the country and its inhabitants. It will depend on the integrity of leadership in the governance of the country and, to a large extent, on the determination and dynamism of the private and public sectors. The government must ensure that it develops a good local content policy and strategy which must result in a win-win formula for both Suriname and the parties involved. 
The task of the private sector is bundling and to be well organized so they can make strong partnerships and alliances with the foreign companies which will settle here en masse. Stars Oli and Fay recently launched Suriname Energy Oil and Gas Summit held in Zoom network meetings in which three days of presentations and panel discussions were held on various aspects of the offshore business. The summit has shown that Suriname is in for quite a ride and a lot of business is heading our way. Almost all major IOCs indicate how important the Surinamese oil is to their business and that hydrocarbon is still a substantial part of their energy portfolio.